let's see here a second. Yes, in here. Give me an introduction on this section here. Basically, we have two presenters today. Colby Beam, who is coordinator for academic affairs and K-12 and post-secondary student services initiatives <clears throat> for OSRHE, and Teresa Shackley, OK College Start coordinator for OSRHE. Now, the background of two presenters, um, Colby, Colby Beam works with Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education, developing pathways to higher education for Oklahoma students. Access to and retention in higher education has become a professional and academic uh, passion for Colby as she has spent most of her career working in first year experience and pursuing a PhD in these areas as well. She considers helping students achieve their goals to be her greatest professional privilege. Teresa Shackley is responsible for planning and facilitating various projects pertaining to the state's college and career exploration website, okcollegestart.org. She received a master's degree in adult higher education and her work experience in higher education includes time in recruitment, admission, financial aid, and student life. Without further ado, let's get started. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Teresa, and as he said, I'm the OK College Start Coordinator, and I am going to get us started today, and then Colby's going to jump in later in the presentation. We're going to start just kind of talking about what ICAP is. So if you don't know what that is, you haven't seen those letters, that's OK. We're going to talk about it. Um, and I'll be focusing more on kind of what's happening in the high schools. And then Colby will talk about how this work impacts the things you do on your campuses and how it can help facilitate some smoother transitions for you and your students. So first up, just the basics, what is ICAP? It stands for Individual Career Academic Planning. And this is basically making sure that every high school student has four years of intentional experiences thinking about what they're gonna do after high school. So thinking about what type of job might be a good fit for them, and then how do they get there? Do they need on-the-job training? Do they need college education? Do they need a master's degree or further degrees? And really giving students the time, building that time out for them to really think about what they're going to do after high school, make a plan, and start taking steps in high school to really be on track to do that easily and smoothly. It is a graduation requirement for every student at a public school in Oklahoma, starting with the high school graduating class of 2023. So they are juniors in high school right now, and then everyone behind them. So um, you may have some coming in this next fall that have some ICAP work. Some schools went ahead and work are working with older students, but for sure in the fall of 23, Every freshman you have coming from a public high school will have this background under their belt. And it is designed to be a time for students to test some things out, look around, learn about jobs that they maybe didn't know existed before, and really find something that's a good fit with what they want to do, but also the skills that they have. Um, so there are some checkpoints throughout ICAP that kind of encourage students to think realistically about what is going to be a good fit for them all around. So in the law itself, there are some specific items mentioned that students have to do. So this is what you will definitely see coming from um, every public high school. There may be some other things on top of this. A lot of schools are building this program bigger and bigger each year, but at minimum, um, students will have taken at least one college and career interest survey every year of high school. So they'll be taking assessments and kind of looking introspectively and thinking about who they are and what they want in life and what skills they have. They also have to write down goals about what they want to do after high school and make a plan for how what steps they need to take to reach that goal. And they revisit those every year of high school. So they will have started thinking about how do I look ahead, see what I want and make a plan to get there? And how do I change the plan? When I start my freshman year, I'm gonna be a doctor. In my sophomore year, I decide I don't wanna work with people. I just wanna be by myself somewhere. How do I change that plan? How do I pivot? Uh, then they'll also be taking an intentional sequence of courses, which of course they're already doing that to stay on track to graduate high school but there's more of a focus now about thinking through what classes you're taking in high school that would best support your plan or your goal. So, you know, if a student wants to be an engineer, that's a lot of math. They should be taking as much math as they can in high school to be really well prepared when they get to your campuses. 
And students are also being more involved in the process of tracking their academic progress. So, you know, they all have a high school transcript that tracks all of that. Um, but through the pilot studies with this program a couple of years ago, they basically discovered that most students didn't have any idea what grades they had earned last year or what that meant or how to figure out what their GPA is and what doors that opened as they were looking for education after high school. So uh, students are more involved in that progress of planning out what they're taking in high school and tracking what grades they've made and kind of where they stand in that progress process. And then same thing with college and career ready assessments. Every junior in the state takes an ACT or SAT. And when they asked students about that afterwards, they just said, I, I took it. I don't know. They didn't know what their scores were. They didn't know if that meant they could start taking concurrent or not, if that meant they were ready to be admitted to the college they wanted to pursue. So there's further conversations with students following up on those standardized testing, um, the standardized testing they're taking and discussing kind of what that looks like and, and how that impacts their plans. And then every student is required to complete some type of work-based learning experience before they graduate. And this is gonna look very different from different schools. It might be a full internship that's for class credit and it's on their high school transcript. It might be a more informal over the summer internship. It could be a one hour job shadowing guest speakers, virtual opportunities. There's a ton of different ways that schools can meet that requirement for students. And um, so you'll see a variety of things, but the idea is that every student is taking the time to really have some type of experience in the field they are considering pursuing to see early on, is this gonna be a good fit? I imagine they don't have to tell you any of the stories of, you know, students who get all the way to their last semester of student teaching and get in a classroom and go, I don't want to work with students. And they're up against a wall. So things like that, trying to kind of look at early on, is this really a good fit for you uh, before you get too far into things? So to coordinate all this work and keep it on track for students to make sure they've met all the requirements because it is a graduation requirement. So they wanna make sure they're doing all these things each year to stay on track um, and to provide a way for educators at the high school level to monitor and see who's doing what and follow up with students that are missing pieces and to provide students an online platform that they can continue to access this information for their entire lives. Uh, school districts can choose different platforms online to coordinate all of this. The first one is OK College Start that I have listed here, and that's provided to um, anyone in Oklahoma free of charge through the state regents and the Oklahoma College Assistance Program. OKCareerGuide.org is a similar website, and it is provided free to Oklahomans through the Career Tech system. And then Naviance is a private company that some school districts are using, um, you will mostly see OK College Start and OK Career Guide. We each have about half of the state as far as public schools are concerned. Um, and then Naviance, I would say there's maybe five or six schools right now that are paying to use that um, website for their ICAP work. So just wanted to kind of say those words, make sure you've heard of those. Um, if students, if you start these conversations with students over the next couple of years, this is what they would be reaching back into to get all that information about the work they've been doing in high school. And then okedge.com is the State Department of Education's website that houses all the information about career play academic, individual career academic planning or ICAPS. Um, so I know you can't click these links because we're on of the screen, but okedge.com actually houses all the things that are listed below. So if you just kind of want to dive into what this looks like more on the high school side, there are toolkits that you can see what the schools are using to guide their work. Um, there is a newsletter that they send out to high schools specifically for college and career readiness, which you are also welcome to sign up for. Again, if you just kind of want to keep your eyes on what's happening in the high schools. They also have a Facebook page. And then the OK Edge learning community, uh, their directions on okedge.com, how to get signed up for that. 
it's basically a, a website where high school educators can log in and do online professional development around various topics. And there are uh, several pieces for college and career readiness. And the long-term goal with that is that it's also somewhere where a teacher could log in, a counselor could log in, a student, a parent, or just a community member, maybe a business owner could log in and they could have discussions and answer questions I would say they're not really there yet, um, but that's kind of the long-term goal with the OK Edge learning community. Um, so you're welcome to check that out if that seems like something you wanna be a part of. Um, again, right now there's not a ton of discussion. It's primarily used for professional development for high school staff right now, but there are some other resources there as well. Excuse me. So I want to show you what OK College Start is how it supports ICAP, just to kind of give you an idea of what resources are available to students. Um, again, it's provided to anyone across the state, completely free of charge. So you may see some things that you think, oh, my students might be interested in using this on the college campus. Absolutely, it's available to them. They can create an account and access all of these resources as well. We offer six different career and interest assessments that students can take as many times as they want. It automatically stores the results in their account so they can see how that has changed over time. Educators can log in and see how those results have changed. Um, and so this is one of the things students are gonna be coming to you with at least four of these. They've done at least one every year of high school to kind of have something to look back on and see what, what area were they interested in or they can retake it if it's been a while since they've um, taken it and they think their interests may have changed. We also have, <clears throat> excuse me, career planning tools, job search tools, so students can log in or you don't have to be a student, right? An adult that just needs to create a resume, start looking for a new job, they can log in, work through the resume builder process, um, and it will save everything. They can come back and edit over time. We have job interview practice questions links to job search websites and tools to help with that whole process. So tons of resources there for students as they look for jobs. And then we have career profiles. So these are used a lot in the high schools when students are learning about what they would do in a job. They can search by name, all their assessments will link to the jobs that fit the assessment outcomes. Um, everything's connected, so it's super easy for students to kind of navigate through. But when they, um, <clears throat> and they can save those to their profile and come back to them easily. They have videos. If they don't want to read the job description, they can watch a short video. Tons of information there for them. And then this is where students will be tracking what they're going to take in high school to make sure they're on track to graduate. This is not intended to be a graduation check at the high school. It's not a transcript for you. I don't think any of you would think you should look at this and take it as gospel truth about what they took and what grades they earned. You're still getting the transcripts for that. Um, but it's just allowing students to be involved in the process and kind of visualize what they're doing in high school. So I just wanted to show you what that looks like for them. And then we have many pages of college planning resources. This is great information for students, for families. If you have students looking at, you know, they haven't quite committed to your institution and they want to look for some information that's general to all colleges, this is a great place to send, send students. And um, we do have a page specifically for concurrent enrollment that includes the minimum requirements for each type of institution, the general basic guidelines for how the program works, and we have some specific one-page quick glances for students that our high school educators are giving students to kind of talk through this whole process before they get started with you on concurrent, and also one specifically for parents. So again, just kind of make sure everybody understands what they're getting into, how this works, and what um, would be the best first steps to make sure this gets off to a good start. We also have free test prep available, and I have two screens here just to show you that when students are in middle school or high school, they see the screen on the left, so they have information for ACT and SAT, the ASVAB if they're headed toward the military, um, Accuplacer if they need to take placement testing with you guys, and then once a student finishes high school, their account 
rolls up or changes a little bit. Um, all the same resources are still there, but they actually gained some additional test prep material. So now you'll see on the right, we have some resources for students taking the TOEFL exam. Um, and then also for graduate school, uh, we have resources for the LSAT, MCAT, GRE, and GMAT. So those are available to your students. Anyone in Oklahoma that wants to access these, and you can actually do this, get to this page without logging in. So you don't even have to have an account or be logged in to start accessing these resources we've pulled together. And then we also have gathered up virtual campus tours. Many of you helped me with those links early in COVID. We had some high schools asking for that when everybody was at home. And so we've gathered those and we're maintaining that list. So if your campus has virtual campus tour options, you are on the list. And if you're not, but you add one here soon, let me know, or I check them every couple of weeks. I check in on campus websites to see if there's any new virtual tour information we need to add. Um, so we encourage students and high schools use this a lot. Again, you don't have to be logged in to get this page either. So it's a great resource for families to get a chance to check out your institutions if they're not able to visit in person. There are also school profiles for colleges and career techs across the country. I just have one example here today. Um, each of these looks a little different based on the information your campus provides to the Petersons report every year. That's where we gather this information and fill in your profiles. But we have links to your undergraduate admission application. So if a student is looking at the profile on a college start and they are ready to apply, it'll take them straight to your application. It includes information about your campus as far as the website, what big, how big your campus is, what size they're looking at. There's some basic financial aid information here and there's some more detailed further down the page. They can see what application fee they're gonna have to pay, what you're looking at during the admission process, your class size, a list of all the certificates or degrees that you offer and a little information about each one. More detailed financial aid information about your costs student life, demographic breakdowns, a list of the sports you offer and whether or not there are scholarships associated with those sports and what division you play in, a list of your assistance services so they can make sure that if they have a special assistance service they need, you offer that. There's a list of um, campus organizations, kind of where students spend time, transfer information. There's tons on those school profiles. And so, like I said, those are updated automatically each year through your reporting that your campus is doing. Um, but if you want to add additional information or make changes to that, you can do that. This happens through the Control Center, which some of you may see and think that's familiar. That's where I download some high school transcripts. That's correct. This is all connected behind the scenes. So uh, someone on your campus is logging into Zap to download high school transcripts. And that's the same place where someone can log in and add a different logo at the top of the screen. You can add different pictures. Um, if you have a change to an academic program mid-year, you can change that. You have control over pretty much everything on that page. Um, and then we'll still update with your new information next year with the new Peterson's report. But if you need to make changes in the meantime or add any pictures or videos, um, that happens on the control center. If you have never seen this and you don't know what I'm talking about, but you are the person who should be in charge of updating this information, just let me know and we'll get you a login set up and, and help walk you through that progress. But we just wanted you to know that you are able to make changes to those profiles if you would like to at any point. And then our last tab is financial aid information. This again is full of resources students and parents and family members can access without logging in. We have tuition breakdown for each of your campuses so students can compare costs and see which one might be a good fit for them. General information about what financial aid is, how to apply, when to apply, how does it all work. Lots of information about Oklahoma's Promise and our other state scholarship programs. And then we also have a nationwide scholarship search um, that anyone can sign up for. And they put in a list of things about themselves their GPA, their test scores, their interests, they can indicate they're the first in their family to go to college. 
they have a chronic illness, they have a family member with a chronic illness, kind of all those things that there are random specific scholarships for, they can list those. And this searches through and gives them a list of awards that are open right now. They're accepting applications and the student meets the qualifications based on that profile they've filled out. Um, so that's a, a great resource for, stu school, for students. And they're all vetted, updated annually. So it's all current and accurate information. That's a lot of information really quickly, kind of about OK College Start and ICAP. Do you guys have any questions about what's happening at the high school side, on the high school side, kind of what students are doing? Feel free to either unmute or pop your questions in the chat box. No burning questions right now. That's fine. We have some, we have some more information to throw at you that might prompt some questions. So I am going to turn it over to Colby now, and she is going to talk more about what you guys are doing on the college side and how this works um, for you guys. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Teresa. What a great setup. Um, as she said, my name is Colby Beam. I work for the Oklahoma State Regents for Higher Education and mainly working on those pathways and pipelines for students to get to college. And so um, I think Teresa laid down a great foundation for uh, talking about what ICAP is, how it got started, and the tools that we have to help students and you all navigate that. And so one of the big things, uh, one of the big initiatives that we had in our investment in the ICAP process through the Regents was reducing college remediation rates. We knew that this was a barrier for students. Um, it cost, estimated cost was $22 million a year. And we know that it affects students who, uh, are already in underserved communities uh, disproportionately. And so preparing academically for the future, what their career is gonna be, if you aren't going pre-med, maybe you don't need chemistry. Um, thinking academically in terms of what is next for you uh, allows students to prepare for the major that they're most prepared for and they're most ready to do and that uh, meets their needs. And so our state has decreased the overall demand for college remediation by 4.7%. Let's jump on to the next slide. So College and Career Ready Math is another course that was created through this process. And it is a senior level math class and it's interactive and hands-on. And the idea is it will bridge that gap for students to take that fourth year math class and help improve their math scores and reduce remediation. And this course has been shown to have great results it's really fun. I encourage you to go to that link. They've got videos, but essentially it's every high school's favorite math teacher, the one that loves engaging with students. And they take the, the classes that, or the concepts from their uh, junior year math class and make them practical. And what they found is that students a CT, a, wow, it is a morning. I am tripping over all of my words. Please forgive me. Students ACT scores, um, have improved as they've taken this class leading to lower remediation rates. And so it's something to start thinking about. One of the things that one of our institutions has already done is consider this course as a wave for remediation. So if they took this course, it can count towards that senior level math class. So do a little investigating. Um, I believe the institution that has started using CCMR as um, a uh, way for remediation is Seminole State College. So it might be worth reaching out if you're curious. All right, clear post-secondary pathways. So the reason we're talking about this today is what can you do with this ICAP information? So what we know is that it supports students in connecting to their majors to a certain career. We're helping students decide where they wanna go earlier in their high school experience. Um, and it can really help us examine ways to help them graduate on time, Clear academic advising, you know, the idea is that students are going to come in as undecided or a lot less frequently um, because they're going to be thinking about this and doing job shadowing and internships so much earlier that when you have those freshman advisement sessions, that hopefully that these are a lot more clear than they used to be, and you can share helpful resources with them. All right, so it breaks it into six career fields. Um, and there are lots of different ways that you can use this information. So you can organize, uh, we're gonna go into some specific 
tools and ways that you can use the fields, clusters, and pathways later. Um, but the six career fields organized structure for clusters and pathways, um, it really pulls it into what probably your colleges look like and how they're naturally separated. There'll be some deviation from institution to institution. 17 career clusters, groups of occupations and industries that, are, that share a set of foundational knowledge and skills, which should help you with advisement, specifically in the areas of math and science, which we know can be barrier uh, programs to students. Career clusters serve as a guide to assist students and families with course selection and opportunities for students, and the 79 career pathways. Uh, multi-year programs of academic and technical study that prepare students for full range of options within each of the 16 career clusters, provide context for exploring career options at all levels of education. In higher education, that means majors. Okay, so one of the things we've seen happen since the ICAP has been introduced is some institutions doing major and minor fairs and separating it out by those career clusters. So students are coming to your class maybe on an enrollment day or even a junior visit day, and they're wanting to explore. They should already know their career cluster as they've been going through the ICAP. And so you can separate it. Let's um, imagine visually you're in a ballroom, separate those tables and those faculty members by that career cluster. So a student knows that I wanna go into the arts field all the arts people are near each other, they have an opportunity to look through those degree sheets and talk with the academic advisors and the faculty about, you know, this is where I want to go long term, what does a course structure for that look like, and hopefully have a lot more informed conversations as they're thinking about choosing your institution, as well as choosing that major and minor pathway. And we, we saw this in action right before uh, COVID, so I would say fall 2019, and it was really neat. The students went through and they've been working with their high school counselors through ICAP. So this was a really natural progression. And they had up on the signs, you know, this is their career cluster. And it made it easy for students to navigate. And you can do this online, of course, too. Perfect. Another opportunity is support those majors by Holland Code. Um, I know Holland Code has been around for a while. I believe they get their Holland Code scores through the pre-ACT if I'm not mistaken, um, but you could also separate it in that way at a major minor career fair because students should be familiar with those also. So it's not, we, uh, as we know, we have lots of ways we do things in higher ed, but that doesn't necessarily always make sense to first generation students. So separating things out by college sometimes makes a lot of sense to us, but may not make sense to them. So when thinking back to those K-12 students and introducing them to your programs, uh, building that in a system they're already familiar with will make it easier on them. All right, let's talk about creating seamless transitions. How can we create more meaningful partnerships between higher education institutions and K-12 sending schools? How can you leverage ICAP to create seamless transition from K-12 to higher education? And how do you currently engage with K-12 schools? That's what we're going to talk about moving forward. And these are my favorite discussion points. These are the things I think about all day. And I'm going to start chatting, but if at any point you have a question, you are welcome to unmute. I want this to feel like a conversation because as we move forward, these things are going to be really specific to each of your institutions and how they're applied. And I'd love to hear that. So um, how can we create more meaningful partnerships between higher education and K-12 schools, making intentional connections with Oklahoma school district. So every school will have an ICAP leader who's at that school and laying the pathway for those programs. And they would love to have higher education professional, professionals on their school district's ICAP team. They get points for those connections and the, their students making those uh, touch points with higher ed. And so you being part of that program makes it easier on them. Um, ask about the barriers to ICAP success at their school and how to be supportive of their efforts. Uh, the State Department of Ed did a survey of all of their high schools asking what the barriers were to uh, meeting some of those ICAP demands. And a lot of things as we were reading through it, Teresa and I were things that our higher education institutions could solve. And we're gonna get into that, to that in a little bit, but you should be asking that on the ground level. And of course, this is a mutually beneficial relationship. 
they can help you meaningfully recruit students that are right for your institution, who have their appropriate coursework already finished, who are prepared for their degree program, and you can help them meet their ICAP standards. You can help them connect to professionals in specific career fields and provide their students with post-secondary information required to the ICAP. And you can ensure relationships with your institution and school district goes beyond the recruitment team. Okay, so some of the common barriers that were identified in that statewide survey by K-12 schools was they didn't know how to create partnerships with you all. I know that you, and I'm sure I'm talking to a bunch of people who've worked in recruitment in different areas, and this probably seems a little funny, but I can't tell you how often I uh, will tell a high school counselor or a superintendent or a principal that you could just call the recruitment office and they will come to you, they will make it a they will make it a point to be as friendly as possible. But I think sometimes they don't realize how convenient or easy that is. And so you reaching out will make that a lot easier for them. Um, coordinating opportunities to have professionals visit their campus. So one of, the th uh, one of the big parts about ICAP is having job shadowing and internship opportunities as well as professional speakers. The schools are filled with people from education and they don't always have the network of people our higher education institutions do. We can use our alumni base to leverage helping those professionals get to their high school campuses. And we have venues for large student-centered events. When they talk about wanting to do these career fairs or these major fairs and these different programs, they don't always have the spaces that all of our K-12 schools offer that, but we have that at the higher ed level that we could offer to them and how you, can how you can partner and support these needs. Reach out to individual schools for potential recruiting efforts, develop partnerships with your alumni network, and offer discounted or free, ideally, space to host high school events in return for the opportunity to promote your institution. Bottom line, ask the schools, make connections now with your school districts. So how can you leverage it to make a more seamless transition? ICAP is just the jumping off point to begin the conversation about students' long-term goals. Um, they're coming to college more prepared than ever to have these conversations, or at least that's what we hope. We know that students are gonna be introduced to professions and careers that they haven't before thought about in the uh, eighth or ninth grade that they may be, didn't even know existed. And so that should be positive as we are advising them in their first year at college. So the most obvious connection is recruitment. Um, using OK College Start to connect users directly to their institutions of interest is awesome. Students are gonna be using our tools and career text tools to connect directly to the institutions they're interested in, which before it was through an application or perusing the websites, but students will be connected directly with your schools and intentional campus visits. So if we already know what major they want to be in as juniors, and we already know that they're preparing on this path, we can make sure that they're meeting the faculty from that major when they come and visit. We know that when high school visits happen that, you know, 90% of their students are interested in these programs and that's what we can focus on. Or maybe we can bring the advisors or faculty or someone from that college to come and talk to those students so they can answer those specific questions or maybe even get to know a student. Um, I think another great opportunity to leverage ICAP is career guidance centers. Uh, when I worked in first year experience, the conversation was always, how do we connect our freshman students to our career uh, services programs? Because they would walk in senior year and by the time they got there, it was too late. Like they should have already been doing the internships and gaining all these experiences and getting freshmen passionate about career services uh, was a difficult, was just a challenge. And so what's cool about this is we can use it to leverage a four-year plan through career guidance centers to help students on that pathway to the career they already know they want. So they can use the information through the ICAP to start working with students the day they arrive on campus to work towards their goals, intentionally plan internships. They know that X amount of students want to go into this area and start working and networking with their business partners. And students are already coming in with experience because now students are required to do these internships and job, job shadowing things. So knowing that freshman year, they can start talking about how to put that stuff on their resume, how to put that in a cover letter. Um, whereas before, so many students were coming in with very little experience. 
So my favorite thing is retention and completion initiatives. Um, you can connect students directly to resources they need early and connect students directly to the social organizations and communities pr prior to first semester. So I don't know what your institutions are doing, but when I used to work on a campus, the earlier I knew information about my students and where they wanted to be and what their interests were, the easier it became for me to help them succeed. So if you know a student is really passionate, I'm gonna say about theater, um, this is what they wanna do. You can connect them with a theater new student orientation leader. You can make sure that they know that there's a theater club on campus. You can connect them with the people that they've already said they're interested in, the programs that they've already expressed uh, they're passionate about really early on and still instead of waiting until you know the middle of fall semester through an organization fair and hoping they find their place but really directly connecting them with the students faculty staff and resources that they've already said they're passionate about and if they opt out of those things that's fine you're working with a few students who are who have strayed from the path as opposed to all of the students you're trying to funnel into paths Advisement should be easier. That's our hope anyway. Intentional conversations about students' ultimate goals, student-like conversations about goals, um, instead of us saying, you know, this is your first year, maybe we don't want you to declare a major until the end of the year, we're gonna make you pre whatever, and just see how it goes. Really allowing students to drive the conversation about what their ultimate goal is and helping them on that pathway, even if they are a pre-major, but really helping guide how this program and how even this year can lead them to that. Um, and I think that will really help with those difficult arts and sciences conversations, which I'm sure you guys have all the time. Like if I wanna be, um, if I wanna be an artist, why do I need to take math class? I, I swear I had an arts and science conversation with every student on my campus at some point. But I think this is where you have that conversation because you have to do this to get there. This is just one step in making you a well-rounded person. You'll be shocked by how much you use math in your art class, but allowing those classes to be build a bridge to where their ultimate goal is and setting that conversation up. And ideally, it will turn advisement into holistic advisement, which I know has been the wave and move for a while now, but thinking, who do you wanna be as a person? How can these courses help you get there? How can we navigate, um, you as a whole person, how can we get you connected to the organizations? How can we support and help you in different ways? Do you need university counseling? Do you need these things? Uh, do you need tutoring services? So spending less time focusing on course to course and more time focusing on being the resource that those students need to succeed is what we'd ideally like to move to. And I know what all advisors and recruiters and first year uh, program managers want to happen. And then lastly, we really hope this will help concurrent issues. So ensure that concurrent students are being advised for their long-term goals. What we know happens is students will sign up for a concurrent class and it's just whatever class they got into that they hope will count towards their degree. But thinking specifically about those math pathways, making sure that if they're going to take a freshman math class, it's the one that they actually need for their major. We know students come in and ask for college algebra, whether our institution even has anything under that name or not. Um, but recognizing that if you're going to be an art student, calculus is not the course you need. You know, there are other math classes that will meet those goals. And let's make sure that we are advising you towards your ultimate goal. So this is where I'd like to brainstorm. I would love to have a conversation about this if you guys feel comfortable with that. Um, so how do your schools, how do you currently engage with K-12 schools at your institution? And feel free to mute, unmute. And if you feel uncomfortable, I'll read whatever you write in the chat. I, I wanna throw one thing out. I know many of you started these conversations with schools in 2019, early 2020, before the world turned upside down. <laughs> Be afraid to reach back out and just start over on those conversations. Just like you have been in crisis mode for the past two school years, so has K-12, obviously. And so a lot of them are kind of just, it's like it's brand new again. They're kind of just starting back on what are we building? What activities are we gonna do? What do we need from the colleges? 
So don't be afraid that you've missed something and you're behind. If you're at a place now where you can reach out and say, okay, let's talk about this again, they would be happy to just start that conversation from scratch again. Thanks, Teresa. You're right, I didn't even think about that. How you've been currently engaging with K-12 schools is probably very different than how it was two years ago. So let's jump into any of the other ones. How do you think this work um, could operate on your campus? How do you think you can leverage ICAP to support your students on, at your institution? Okay, I won't force you to talk. Is there any questions before we wrap this up? Well, if there's no questions, we'll jump into, we've got a couple shameless plugs at the end of this. And so forgive us, I'll hand it back over to Teresa for this portion. So we wanted to make sure you all are aware, I know a lot of you already know this, but just in case we've missed someone, um, the State Regents has a student preparation team and it's Lisa and Annette, and they work with primarily high school counselors, making sure they have the, the information in their hands that students need to get to college. And they host um, workshops every September across the state for high school counselors and administrators. and they just share all the resources that the state regents have, um, concurrent enrollment information, Oklahoma's Promise. They offer the, the state regents will pay for students to take the pre-ACT as sophomores. Um, and then over the past couple of years, they've built in a concurrent enrollment panel. And so your recruiters have been, or admissions officers have been joining in and having some discussion with high school counselors about you know, answering questions figuring out what might work better, just kind of building those relationships. Um, and so just to show you, they went all over the state this year uh, with 10 different locations. And they are interested in partnering with your offices to potentially coordinate your you know, high school counselor day on the same day as these student preparation workshops for next fall. So um, they start planning now for next September to make all this work smoothly. So if you, or if you wanna pass this on to someone, if your campus is interested in even just talking about that, kind of working through what that might look like, if you will reach out to Annette, her email's down there along at osreg.edu um, and just let them know you kinda of wanna talk about it. You don't have to commit from day one, but they are would love to just have some conversations with campuses if you guys are at all interested in partnering that on that those days so it happens all at once um, on your campuses. And then I wanna talk about summer academies. It's uh, my favorite program the Regents do. So um, if you haven't heard about this, it is a free STEM summer academy that our institutions do. It's grant funded by my agency. And uh, it essentially is an opportunity for eight through eighth through 12th graders to do a summer camp at your institution. It can be residential or commuter. And it's grant funded free to institutions and students. And it's a great recruiting opportunity. One of the components of the grant is you have to encourage these students to go to college. And what's amazing about it is we really try to encourage our institutions and our programs to recruit students who otherwise might not be thinking about college or even your institution. And so, frequently from underserved communities, and we get great traction on it. Students come back year after year, and a lot of students end up attending the institution that they, they came to visit and get to know the faculty and join those programs. Um, we have lots and lots of evidence to show that this has been uh, really successful since it was implemented, I think, in the 90s. So RFPs, Request for Proposals, go live every August. We just uh, closed the door on this year's set, but you can expect applications for high school students to go up every spring and next summer, give, give it a thought. Um, and yeah, 
uh, fill out an RFP and a proposal and join us on the list. Then we just wanted to make sure you have our contact information. Um, I put Colby's email in mine in the chat as well. So if you have questions about what work to do on your campus or how, you know, if you want some ideas or want to connect with someone at another school, but you're not sure how to do that, Colby is your go-to for anything you need help with on your campus. If you have questions about OK College Start, feel free to let me know. And then we listed Marissa Lightsey also. She's the Executive Director of College and Career Readiness at the State Department of Education. So she is overseeing all the ICAP work at the high schools. Um, and so she can be a great resource if you have questions about either specific high schools or just, you know, we kind of want to know what the general trends are about something. Um, on the high school side, she's a great resource for you as well. So we included her information there for you. Any questions or thoughts or anything you want to talk about before we let you guys move on to your next session today? All right. Well, we appreciate you guys taking the time to attend this session and learn a little bit more about ICAP and uh, the resources the regents have. And please just don't hesitate to reach out to either one of us if you have questions or want to talk through some of this further in the future. Thank you so much. Hey, appreciate you, Teresa and Colby, for that good information about the K-12 to uh, college pathway. It's really good to, good to have in this day and age with students, you know, the career paths. So uh, appreciate that. And everybody in attendance today there, I put the uh, link to the uh, survey in the chat. So I go ahead and fill that out as soon as possible, but uh, appreciate everybody and have a great day.